How are we doing folks? My name is Jeff Hoagland and welcome back to another YouTube exclusive here on my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, today we are going to be taking uh, Just Sky Control through a modern league here on Magic the Gathering Online. Um, <clears throat> if you've watched a lot of my content, you probably know that I'm not the biggest fan of the control decks or interactive decks in general in modern. However, I think blue-white control and this iteration of Jeskai control get to lean into something that makes them kind of appropriate for modern as a whole, and that is they get to do something that's incredibly unfair. Terminus is just a busted magic card. It's a one mana, reset your board. It has a very swingy, powerful effect, much in the same way that a lot of the decks that are good in modern have swingy, powerful effects. So I think this card alone especially in conjunction with some Jace the Mind Sculptor to set it up and some ops to flip it out on your opponent's turn, really give this archetype some of that busted power level that you kind of need to compete in modern to a degree. Um, this build is actually pretty close to what we've been seeing in the straight blue-white control decks, but it's just got a very small red splash for... Some bolts, some helixes, and electrolyze the main, and then a couple of copies of counterflux in the board, which is kind of some sweet mirror technology, but also like useful against something like uh, you know storm for the overload effect, or just generic combo decks in general, like very good against like ad nauseum in case you're expecting them to pack to negation you or something along those lines. Head on in to our first match here with uh, the list and see how it goes. One of the big upsides I think you get from being into Jeskai as opposed to straight blue white two is that you'll notice we got full full four copies of Snapcaster Mage. Let's just be a little bit proactive at times too when we need to. And the main reason we're able to play four is because of these bolts and these helixes that we can flash back proactively. In blue white, you generally only see like two or three Snapcaster Mage at most because they don't generally have enough spells to proactively be flashing back. Again, seems fine. Needs a red source at some point here but is pretty reasonable otherwise lead on the colonnade tapped um not in a huge rush to opt here we can uh check out check out what our what we have going on here once we know what the opponent's doing it lets us make a little bit more informed op decisions basic mountain Beaumont courier there was the the 12 bolt deck with fiery temper that went around for a little bit that plays that also various Various budget red aggro decks that could potentially be playing that card as well. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and opt to start. Because if I find a red source, I wouldn't mind putting it into play here. I'm going to bottom a non-red land here. I'm going to put this other Hollow Fountain into play tapped. I think I'm not so desperate to find another land that I want to shock necessarily. Monastery Swift Spear, sure. Red removal looking really good here. If we were sitting on only Path to Exile as ways to remove my opponent's creatures from play, I'd actually be a little bit worried. But because I have, you know, this Lightning Bolt, this Electrolyze in my hand, we're not in too terrible of a spot here. We also have four copies of Terminus in our deck that are very reasonable to hit. Like that. Like that Terminus right there. I believe in miracles. Do 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 do. Bye, friends. All right, so let's try and hit our third land here. I'm not gonna be greedy. I know I bottomed the non-red source last time. I'm gonna take the celestial colonnade this time. The uh, the third land here lets us snap up next turn to try and dig even deeper for a red source. <clears throat> Our opponent continues missing their land drop. We should. Wow, they don't have a one drop either. So, like, no second land, no one mana play. It's pretty incredible for us. I'm going to go and just dig deep with these uh, these cantrips here. Check out our options. That is not a land. That is also not a land. All right, red splash looking a little less than free so far. All right, I mean, our cantrip beta lightning bolt seems like a winning proposition for us. Sulfurous Springs. Okay, so got a little bit of a black splash here, it looks like. 
Interesting. I don't think I've seen a black splash in these red decks before. I'm going to center my camera a little bit here. Look at that. Let's do it. D2 Lava Runner. Yep. Do you have a bolt for my dome? Feels like it. Suspended Rift Bolt. Not quite. Alright, so that... That isn't quite what we were looking for, but I think it's probably fine. I'm going to go ahead and just brainstorm with this, Jace. I think at the, with the position we're in and the cards that they have, if this is just brainstorm gain, you know, gain three, I think I'm okay with that. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, double Helix on top of my deck here. Actually, I'm going to put Helix Steam Vents on top of my deck. And the reason for this is my opponent's deck likely plays Goblin Guide or could potentially play Goblin Guide. So this way, if they have a Goblin Guide they want to attack with next turn, I'll get to draw the Steam Vents with it. If we live to cast all of the cards in our hand, we should be in a pretty incredible spot this game. And the fact that we have double Helix should ensure that we can live to do that. Especially with the Jace taking the hit there. <clears throat> if they play another creature here, I'm probably going to shock in this team vents. Sovereign's Bite. Okay. You think, I think without them playing a creature here, I'm actually just going to put this into play tapped and use a Path to Exile. This might be a little bit bad because I am unlocking them off their, off their two lands, but this is giving them a two free pointer, which is kind of like giving them a free spell. This is giving them a land. This is giving them a free spell. So I think I'd rather give them a land. And if they play like a second creature that can attack here, I can just like double path this turn, which will give them into like more flexibility range. But I think that's fine. <clears throat> that one I might let hit me. You think? I think I'm gonna take the hit from that. One. I don't think I don't think that one's worth giving them a land. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna decline taking this hit though. Take the hit here. I guess uh, my sequencing here is technically incorrect. I should let this trigger resolve before I path them, so that way they could potentially like exile their only basic land. So small, small percentage point miss there. four cards left in hand okay so black splash for bite and bump so far so i'm drawing a helix off the top of my deck i could theoretically die here but it's pretty unlikely i'm gonna go ahead and do one one here i guess i know they have three spells in their hands so maybe it's greedy to just not snap the helix off I like try and draw to a land here this might be, this might be greedy. They could theoretically, like, untap and just, like, triple bolt us, right? <clears throat> just make us incredibly sad. It's possible that I'm supposed to shock last turn just because, like, my bottleneck is, like, not having enough, not being able to use my red mana enough times. Yep, okay, they got two cards left. Love to draw basic mountain. That is not a basic mountain. All right, let's just uh, send this upstairs. They've, they've helixed me twice with Sovereign's Bite. Let's helix them back. Hoping they draw lands and creatures here. All right, that's a land. So they've got two cards left here. Worth noting that our Path to Exiles are pretty bad against their, their bump that's in the graveyard here. All right, am I dead? Yeah, it looks like I'm dead. All right, not not technically dead this turn, but feeling feeling mostly dead. Get to draw uh, three cards next turn. Woof. Um, I think I'm just supposed to start attacking with this, just like try and end the game. I think I just like hope they brick off for a turn or two here and try and end the game. I guess I'm not even going to be able to do that because I can only deal 7 a turn and they're at 22. I need to draw like a basic mountain. So I could deal like 7 and then 10 and then and then 7. I assume we're going to be dead here. Like regardless if I helix proactively or not, things like end up in a pretty bad spot for us. We just missed on red mana for too long. Maybe the turn, maybe the turn I path was wrong and I was supposed to have just shocked and not unlocked their mana. That's probably the mistake I made. I 
All right, am I dead? Uh, a land kills us because they have a bump in the night in the bin. Would love to draw another Snapcaster Mage so we can snap Helix here. Cryptic Command. All right. That is, uh... That means I'm technically not dead yet. We just have to uh, not take damage from anything. And, like, if we find my way to a Snapcaster Mage or our third copy of Helix, we could be in an okay spot. So hopefully this is just, like, land, flashback, bump, we counter draw, we bolt them. And then we hopefully find something useful with our couple of draws here. If we chain Cryptic Commands together, we could potentially win this game. A skull cracks in their main, that's good to know about. And that's their only card in hand. So I'm really, I'm really kind of confused as to why. I guess they, they, they're playing around like mana leak here by doing this. They say, why are they doing this instead of flashing back the bump of the night? Would be, would be my question. Let's just send this upstairs. Jace, Jace gives us some relooks and stuff. Uh, that is not, that is not a fetch land I can use. Let's leave that one's gonna hang out right where it's at for now. All right, I mean, that's that's logic knot with a ton of cards in my bin. So I guess I put these two back. And I play this and I pass the turn. Maybe I'm supposed to leave Terminus on top. All right, I mean, this is good for me. So do I want to bolt this or do I want to path this? I think I want to path this. And then I will bolt them. So this puts them to nine, which means uh, lightning helix in, so there's a search plus a terminus on top of my deck. So I'm drawing search. I can J storm into, oh, they only have two basics. That's good to know. Or if they have a third, it's exiled face down over here. Um, if I J storm into a lightning helix here, I get to win the game. None of those are Lightning Helix. All right, let's put this back, put this back. Um, so I can animate this Colonnade and attack with this and still have Logic Knot up. So that means they'll be dead next turn. This is a weird game. Was not, was not expecting to win this one. But we should, we should be a lock, right? They're about to, like, I'll end step, I'll end step both them, and if they do anything, I can logic not for infinite. They need, like, exquisite firecraft or something weird, weird in their deck here. Because I have the logic knot. I would like to counter your spell, and I'm going to play around Simeon Spirit Guide by exiling an additional card. Bolt you. Who's who's the burn deck now? Welcome to Thunderdome. All right. Well, that was... I can dig it. I can dig it. We got him. Timely. Negate. Dispel. Um, Electrolyze probably a little bit bad. Honestly, Terminus probably isn't very good here, huh? Is it? How do I, how do I feel about Terminus? These four and five mana spells are probably a little bit clunky too, though. But they do, they do like provide a steady stream of like get you out of jail, get you out of jail cards. I feel about cryptic versus terminus. Like, if we hit the mid to late game, having access to cryptic seems pretty reasonable. I wonder if I like 
do this, maybe? Just like, because Terminus is kind of like another piece of one mana removal, right? Like, it just like flips off the top and does its thing. And they have, what do they show me? They show me Gitu Lava Runner, Monastery Swift Spear, Beaumont Courier, so it's 12 creatures. No, 12 creatures is enough to leave Terminus in my deck. Maybe on the play I just really wanted as a catch-up mechanic, and maybe I'll trim it on the draw, on the or on the draw I really wanted as a catch-up mechanic, and I'll trim it on the play. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a little conservative and leave this in on the draw, I think. Maybe that's maybe that's silly. This hand's really good. Tap land into Helix your thing. Then we have uh, opt plus white mana for turn three. Then we go like, so we go tap land into planes, helix your thing, into tap land, opt into terminus your other thing. Foreboding runes. Yep. I guess that makes sense. They're probably playing a little bit of a budget mana base since they had uh, sulfurous springs in game one. They kept seven. Excellent. A rebuy for our lightning helix here. Mat me, little Beaumont. Wow, what a beating! What, what a beating! Tilt City Population Me. Woof. Thank you, thank you, Steam Vent. Huh. Things that things that feel bad for 100. All right, I'm gonna helix this now. Remember, just because your card's an instant doesn't mean you have to play it at instant speed. My opponent showed me they had skull, some number of skull cracks in their main deck, so they probably have four post sideboard even if, if they don't have four in the main. So I like to just like get this helix in while the getting is good and get my guaranteed health. Yep. It's possible that I'm supposed to like kill the Gitu Lava Runner because it's going to hit me for more damage. But the flip side of that is my opponent's likely to be able to get their hand pretty empty this next turn. So like there's a good chance that they could be... What's what I'm searching for? There's a non-zero chance that they could be like uh, empty using the what's it called next turn. And I wouldn't mind drawing another Terminus or an untapped land here that doesn't hurt me. So that way I can timely for minimal damage. Untapped land that doesn't hurt me. Sign me up. So let's just go ahead and cash this in. Go to 14. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. That is what we have for mountains. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Respect the basic mountain. Do 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 I'm going to dubs block one of these and chump the other. Just keep our health total as high as possible. If we're going to lose this game, we're probably going to lose it with cards in our hands. So let's just make sure we try to try to live at every possible moment. Eek as many hit points as possible out of everything. Flaming Held's pretty good. That's like arguably one of the best draws in their deck there. I think we should draw a bunch of cards here. Probably going to opt when they go to combat. And then if we don't hit the Terminus, we'll probably bolt down the G2 Lava Runner here. Just like decline taking damage from it. Next turn we can snap Helix something as well, which is nice. Um, hmm. I'm going to do this in response now. And I'm going to do this in response. Probably almost certainly lose the Cryptic Command here, but I think that's fine. Duress is an interesting choice. This card doesn't deal damage to us. And, like, now if they play another creature out here, and even if they attack me, I get to, like, untap and snap Helix it without fear of getting skull cracked, which is really good for me. The Flame of Kelds have felt, like, minimally scary so far. Since we have all of our colors, getting uh, shock lands out really isn't that big of a deal. So I'm going to hold, I'm going to play the Flooded Strand, but I'm going to leave it uncracked for the time being. Or now we'll play that, I guess. I say, but potentially leave it uncracked. So that way it could shuffle a Jace Brainstorm down the line. 
I think I'd rather snap Helix list than snap Timely Reinforcements, because if I snap Timely, we both have one creature and I don't get three dudes with it. So I'd rather just gain three and kill their thing. And the way the way the Flame of Keld timing works with Rift Bolt is incredibly awkward, because like the Rift Bolt's only doing three, even though Flame of Keld's last chapter is popping off this turn. So like there's a chance like this last chapter does nothing, and this is just like a two-mana draw two, which I guess like the red deck's probably in the market for a two-mana draw two, but it just seems kind of mediocre. Yep, I turned in. It was a two-mana draw two, and then that did that did an extra point to me. So they're at 20. Uh, fetching to six here feels a little bit bad because it puts me into range of double bolt, but I definitely want to start attacking with the colonnade this turn. Let's get in there. So get to leave Path to Exile up here, which is great since we drew that. Have to go ahead and just crack them down to 14. Remember, if we give the burn deck infinite turns, it's going to draw ways to kill us. So let's just put it on a, as quick of a clock as we can muster. We also know, based on last game, this Path to Exile is incredibly likely just Exile target creature. Unless they had a third basic hiding under one of those four Exiled cards. So, there's a good chance that this Path doesn't even ramp them into the, uh, the bump in the night, which is nice. Yep. This is how we die. Runner. Runner, runner, burns. They've got what? So we've got, we killed them in three attacks here. So they've got two shots to draw, draw three pointer, which is pretty likely, right? Like probably a third of their deck kills us right here. So they have like two shots at a 33 percenter. We're looking for them to draw creatures here. So we've got a fistful of Path to Exiles in my hand. Creatures, creatures and lands are good for us. We need two, two creatures or lands. I think we're dead. Oh. 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 Well, baby. It's a good one. Snapcaster mages, counter spells, timely reinforcements, helixes. All of these things are good draws for us here. Planes. Kind of, kind of one of those things. Kind of one of those things. All right. Just one, one more brick here. Brick by Glorious Brick Opponent. Ooh, look at that. They did have a basic hiding under one of those Exiled cards. Fancy. Am I dead? Survey says... If it's an instant speed burn spell, they should technically wait till our upkeep to do it to play optimally. Because that way, if I have a logic knot, I tap off of attacking with colonnade. Looks like they had nothing, so we got there. Nice, nice. Onward, upward, backward, forward. It's pretty close, close game, close games of magic there. The lightning, lightning helixes came in handy both games. Having access to snapcaster mages to attack also came in handy both games. Slow and steady. Um, I think this is a keep. Yeah, I think this is a keep. Alrighty, hope you're hope everybody's comfortable. It's gonna be it's gonna be a long one. It's gonna be we're gonna we're gonna be here for a minute, okay? It's funny, so I was I was looking at my list of decks that I had that I wanted to record with over the next few days so I could have stuff to go up between now and uh, Christmas Eve when, I, when I'm taking a couple days off over the weekend for holiday stuff. And I was like, well, do I want to record with Just Guy tonight? And I was like, yes, I want to record to Just Guy with Night because if the Just Guy League takes three hours, I can actually take three hours to do it tonight. Whereas if it doesn't, if it takes, you know... Save, save the leagues that, when I'm on a time crunch, that are going to be shorter. Like the aggro decks. Aggro. And this is attacking my colony. You're attacking my sacred foundry. Sure. This is my basic mountain. There are many like it, but this one is mine. That's, that's really strange that they would burn that on just, like, trying to attack my colors rather than attacking my celestial colonnade.
I guess they don't know what the rest of my hand looks like, but still. I wonder if we'll see a cryptic out of them here. Yeah, I guess that makes that makes sense. If I like untap and slam Jace, they're like incredibly sad, right? So gonna go ahead and opt at end of turn here. Logic Knot was a good pickup, by the way. Just having a way to actually. Uh, no, nah, I don't think I'm close enough to burning them out quite yet. We're getting, we're getting, we're getting there though. We're heading, we're heading in the general direction of close enough to burn them out. I guess the next question becomes: Do I snap bolt or do I snap opt here? The answer to that question might lie in, do I have to fight over the Snapcaster Mage? Doesn't look like it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and snap, snap opt here. Having more Snapcaster Mage is probably good in the Colonnade Mirror, if I had to venture a guess. Cryptic's not a bad one. I probably want to field something soon just so I have more blue sources. This even gets in a couple of chip shots. It's pretty reasonable for us. I would love for you to turn my cantrip into a rampant growth. That is, you are such a giver opponent. I don't believe any of those terrible things that have been said about you. Now, worth noting here... My opponent almost certainly has more access to basics than I do. So that's like something worth considering as I'm playing these, taking these turns here. I think I have what, three or four more basics? I have four more basics, okay, six. There's six basics in this Jeskai deck, which is like a pretty, pretty generous amount of basics. They probably have upwards of 10 though. All right, you know I have a Terminus in my hand. Come at me. I think this next Snapcaster is gonna be a Snap Electrolyze kind of Snapcaster Mage. I would like all of my blue sources, please. So the real question is, can they stick a threat and beat double counterspell? Probably not. Especially game one. Game one, both of our decks tend to have a little less counter magic in them than post board. Having access to counter flux post board is going to be really sweet. Just like having a nice firm no button to be like, mm -mm -mm, I don't think so. Now, this will be interesting. We could, we could lose... We could we could lose this counter fight here. They could they could potentially have two more counter spells to cast off of these lands. Wow, that worked. I uh, I'm gonna be completely honest. I wasn't prepared for that to work. Oh, do I still have another? I have another white land I can fetch in my deck. I do. All right, sweet. Yeah, mana base in this deck seems pretty reasonable. Good clean love. And I'm, I'm assuming this is going to get Path to Exiled again here. So let's put some to 11. If they Path this, I think it's, I think it's time to just get Frisky here at this point. Let's... It's like crack you for six down to five. I have this lightning bolt in my hand here too. We're like one piece of burn away from ending the game. Hmm. I feel like if they had a counter, they would have fought about the cryptic command last turn. 
Maybe maybe that's a bad read. I feel like this is how I win this game. All right, I'm assuming this is resolving too then, unless they have a spell snare. All right, you're at five. I've got lethal in play. I've got a bolt in my hand. All right, that, that clears up your Snapcaster Mage problem. I guess it's worth noting that my logic not there took me off of being able to flip search next turn, which is not nothing. Sure, begin sculpting my mind. Snapcaster Mage gets them a way to deal with my Celestial Colonnade, which is not nothing for them. That being said, Snapcaster Mage, Lightning Bolts, and Helix is on my side of the table. Just kill them. You get two shots at those cards. Oh! Oh, that was a big mistake. I should have... I should have bolted their dome... Uh, during... During my upkeep... In response to this trigger... Is what I should have done. That is 110% what I should have done. If I would have bolted during my upkeep, I could have flipped the search for Ascanta this turn. This gives them chances to do things now. Before I can activate this. Another thing that's worth noting, while this game might not come down to it, maybe these bears don't come down to it, but like being able to stay ahead on clocks is a big deal usually. I wonder if they're going to field my field proactively here. Sure. All right. I'll bite. That, that was a worse draw than the colonnade I binned, believe it or not. So this forces them to field my not as Kanta, so that's nice. Unless they drew a snap or a path. Take the logic knot here. Wow, the just just a concession from the counterspell deal. All right, let's get these out of my deck. Let's get these in, get these in, get this in. Make sure my path to exile. I guess I leave a couple of paths to deal with their colonnades to protect my planeswalkers. Doesn't seem unreasonable. I don't really want anything else here. I don't think surgical is good enough. As much as, as much as Chet at home would like me to bring the surgical extractions in, I think they're worse than the Path to Exiles and the Colonnade Mirror. Slow, slow, and steady. Remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, and you're someone whose schedule doesn't necessarily line up with the times that I'm live, that you can still subscribe on Twitch to support my content even while I'm offline. I really appreciate the people that take the time to do that. That includes those Amazon Prime slash Twitch Prime subs. If you have Amazon Prime, sure one of the many people in the world like myself who can't live without two-day shipping, and you link your Amazon account to your Twitch account, you get Twitch Prime included with that for free. It gives you a free channel subscription on Twitch every single month, which are it's one of the many things that helps keep me employed. Almost, almost half of my subs are Prime subs. It's great. God. God bless Twitch Prime. Very, very exciting start here. Ah, the old ambush viper. We see we we got frisky last game. So they're like, you know what? We're gonna get frisky this game. The frisky Snapcaster Mage is much less good out of the deck that doesn't have access to a bunch of burn spells, though. So less less concerned with what could be going on on the other side of the table. 
Also, like, I left all my bolts and my helixes and my electrolytes in my deck, right? So, like, I have a much easier time killing this, and I don't have to path to exile them to get rid of it. So, like, when they got rid of our Snapcaster Mage, they had to path to exile it, which is, like, getting ahead on mana in a matchup like this is very relevant. Whereas, like, if I just, like, point a burn spell at this, it's just, like, it's just a one-for-one. One. Drawing our basics feels bad in the Field of Rune Mirror. We would like to avoid doing that, ideally. This is actually incredibly bad for us, so double double threats here, big deal. Please click one of my cards and give me an Electrolyze. If they take nothing, we're very dead, because it means you just have a bunch of counter spells and they're going to beat us down for five over the next two turns. So we really, we really want them to take one of the cards out of our hand. All right, all right, sure. What do we got? What do we got? I feel like if there was a, if this was Magic Arena and there was a sound effect for a counterflux, it would just be like, eh, denied. This is my, pardon, pardon me. Mom, allow me to, Put my no button on the table. Stop it. That being said, we're, we're still not, we're still not in the clear here, right? I get, I get a window to stick adjacent to my own, which gets a brainstorm and gain three. If we're a true professional, we'll draw one electrolyze here. Not, not quite that professional, I guess. Oh, you know what? I should have played my field of rune there. Because if I played the Field of Rune, I could have shuffled my library during my upkeep before I redrew either of the cards that I put back on top. Yeah, that was the line, and I could, put, could have put back both islands there. It was 110% the line was play the Jace off of my Field of Rune. So I'm going to 10. Jace is dead. You killed him! You're a monster! I'm going to lead on casting search for it. Can't you hear? Wow, that resolved. Okay. Um, I'm going to play this fetch line. I'm going to stop during my opponent's upkeep. So I played the search for it. Can't hoping to bait a counterspell there. When that failed, I'm now going to, during their upkeep, try to kill their creatures. And the reason why we try to kill the creatures during their upkeep as opposed to during my turn is so that way if they pass back to themselves here, they've now not used any of their four mana on my turn cycle. And now if they have counter spells to interact with my removal spells, they're going to use their mana on this new turn cycle, putting them a little bit further behind when it comes to tempo. All right, so do I try and helix this here? I think I try and helix this here. It puts me up to... It puts me like down to five if they counter this, but it puts me up to seven cards in my bin to flip the search for Escanto, which is valuable. And like if they tap off here, they know they know I have this Tefri in my hand and I get to slam the Tefri next turn. And like this Snapcaster Mage isn't lethal for four more turns. So Spell Snare, sure. So no guarantee that the Tefri happens next turn. That being said, we've gotten our mana into the part where we're in colonnade range, but I guess they have the Field of Rune to keep that in check. The Search for Escanto is going to increase our average card quality here, though, which is also nice. I think I'm like 300% just trying to slam this Tefri down their throat. I guess I could just flip the Azkanta and start drawing cards with it, though. Maybe I just actually, maybe I don't flip the Azkanta. They put a card in the bottom. Did you get a blue source? Yeah, I think I think I actually decline flipping the Azkanta because I would like to field their field before they can. No, that one can stay there. Transform Azkanta. No, that one can stay how it is. So let's do this. And then during my end of turn, I will path the Snapcaster Mage. 
Actually, am I going to do it during my end of turn? And during my end of turn, I will Helix the Snapcaster Mage. That's perfect. I don't, I don't want to ramp them into the fifth land. Is, is what I'd prefer not to do. But I'd really like to kill this while they're tapped out. So, like, this Helix puts me up to eight, which means, like, I'm pretty safe from, like, oops dying, which is nice. They're up on cards in hand. I'm up on mana and permanence in place. So that seems pretty profitable for us. Feeling, feeling pretty ahead here. Not a lock by any means, but definitely ahead. I'm going to decline to flip search one more time here. Check out my options. Snap's not a bad draw. Again, I'm going to field during their upkeep because this way when they field me in response, their other lands are going to be tapped through their turn cycle again, which is good for me. Okay, well now, and this was this was sloppy sequencing on their part again. So they should have they should have waited till after my Tefri trigger resolved to do this. Because now I get to field their field. And then I get to untap an extra land with my Tefri, leaving me snap uh snap counterflux up for next turn. And getting to field while they're tapped down there is nice because it means they can't um they can't field my colonnade in response to me fielding their field, which is ideal for me. So now I've got now I've got a green light to flip my search for as can't next turn and start drawing cards with that. I've got cards coming from my Tefri. They're probably far enough behind here that you just like hope I don't have something this turn because every turn that goes by with me activating search and drawing with Tefri, I'm just burying them further and further. So I'm more and more likely to have an answer. So the fact that I have an answer right now is a big deal. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. This is a concession Snapcaster. So we're just going to start burying them from here. This is this is why people play these decks, by the way. Whenever whenever you start winning with a deck like this, you just feel unbeatable. And people often don't concede even when they've lost the game in, against decks like this, which means you get to sit here and feel unbeatable for a really long time. This, uh, the psychology behind playing decks like this is something that I find incredibly interesting because... Decks like this, even when they're not good, when they lose, they lose really quickly. And when they win, they win really slowly. So they always feel better than they actually are because you don't spend a lot of time losing and you spend a ton of time winning, which makes it, which makes the deck just play out. The way it feels when you play it out feels good from an emotional perspective. Whereas like a deck like Grishelbrand we talk about, that's a deck that feels really bad from an emotional per emotional perspective. It does the inverse. When it wins, it wins quickly. And when it loses, it usually takes a while to lose. So the actual matches, match the actual physical time span you spend with it is off compared to the amount of actual games you're winning and losing. So I assume this is going away here. But thanks, thanks to the beauty of Tefri, we got to activate this thing three times. So... Hopefully that's good enough. I I would love a negate. Thank you, Ascant. I appreciate you. Makes me a little sad I didn't get the other Ascant earlier. Yeah, yeah, we're we're done here. I'm I'm not gonna win the game for like five to ten more minutes, but. We're pretty done here. How we doing, folks? Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to my uh, YouTube exclusive video here. Um, I'm doing, doing these a couple of times over the next few days. I am going to be off Saturday, Sunday, and Monday from doing live content this weekend for the holiday. I'm going up to visit family in Chicago this weekend. But I will be posting new sets of YouTube exclusive every single one of those days. There's going to be new content here on my YouTube channel every single day between now and probably forever. I will be live on uh, Christmas with some, with some content on Twitch, though. As always, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My YouTube subscribe or my, my Twitch channel 
Subscribing on YouTube is free. My subscribing on Twitch either requires a Twitch Prime or $4.99 or more. Those people directly keep me employed. They're the reason I'm able to be here day in and day out creating content full time, and I wouldn't be here without them. Past subscribing on Twitch, you can also support myself by checking out some of my very wonderful sponsors. We just added the Nerd Rage Championship Series to my sponsor lineup moving into 2019. They are going to be doing $5,000 championship trial tournaments every single month in the Midwestern United States. I'm going to be playing in a number of their tournaments as well. And if you're not in the Midwestern United States, you can't make it out to their tournaments even if you are be sure to check them out on twitch they do streaming uh event coverage of all of their stuff at twitch.tv forward slash nrg series cardsphere.com will love to help you turn your cards into other cards directly with their players cardsphere also recently added a really awesome draft simulator to their website so you should check that out as well if you're into limited InkedGaming.com will love to help you customize your gaming experience using code Jeff12. You can save 12% on custom play mats, mouse pads, binders, and bags with them. You can upload your own custom artwork or choose the wide range of custom artwork that they have on their website. And of course, thanks for dropping into Hoaglandia, folks. I know there's a lot of great places you can get magic content on the internet right now, and I appreciate you choosing to spend part of your time here watching mine. I wouldn't be here without all of y'all. The people are the folks who make the content for us. So we're a cool 2040 here. Just got kind of busted. The uh my sub who sent this deck in. This deck is this deck list is a viewer deck list, just like most of the things that we play here on, on the channel. Um said that they uh, I think they went ten and five at a Grand Prix they played this in, which is a pretty respectable record. You know, I went four and two at the tournament the other day, which is like a smaller version of ten and five, right? Like sixty six percent. Any any time you win sixty percent or more of your matches of magic, you should be ecstatic. That is that is batting above average for us mere mortals. You know, it's only like the Reed Dukes and the John Finkles of the world that like get anywhere close to seventy percent with some consistency. I think my peak performance when I was playing a lot on the SCG series was like 65% ish over a large, over like, you know, like a three digit sample size, but getting, getting much past that is, is tough in a game like Magic. A lot of variance by design, which is, which is honestly one of the things that makes Magic great, right? Like if we all, if we all wanted really low variance games, we'd be, we'd be playing chess or go or something along those lines. I clicked into the wrong scene out of force of habit. This is the offline scene with the deck list above me. Look at that. We'll figure we'll figure this out eventually. It's late. I'm recording this. Recording this after I streamed earlier today. All the all the stuff it blurs. Alright, so this hand is not fantastic. It's five lands, and it's like a pseudo mulligan to six, so like five lands electrolyze is not particularly good. This hand is not stellar either, but I think it's a keep. This is probably a game where I fetch Hollowed Fountain with this and just like pretend I don't have red cards until I find another land. Field of Rune also acts as like a slow evolving wilds in games like this occasionally. So this could fetch us a basic mountain down the line potentially. Fetching a Hollowed Fountain with this also gives us the opportunity to draw a Terminus on the first turn of the game should they play a one mana creature and be able to miracle that right away. Opponent kept seven, they're on the draw. I would like to comment that that, uh, that mirror match was done real fast. This should be a good matchup for us. When I was playing, I played this matchup a couple of times from both sides. I've never liked it from the hardened scale sides. It's by no means a free win. The hardened scale deck is, excuse me, a very good and real deck in modern, but I definitely, definitely think favor falls on the side of the Terminus player. That being said, our hand here is not amazing. These cryptic commands are kind of clunky. We've got one of our four Termini in our hand already, which means we're less likely to Miracle One when we need to. Sure. I think I'm actually gonna hold on to this opt for now because this opt gives me extra opportunities to Miracle Terminus on their turn. Perfect. We hit the land off the top, so that uh, that flooded strain is going to grab Steam Vent, which cements our third blue source as well as our red source of mana here. 
If my opponent plays even just a second creature out here, I'm going to go ahead and opt. Just give myself the chance to find the Terminus right away. Don't, don't get greedy, especially when there's two hardened scales in play. Just, like, take their stuff off the board and keep it in check. If we can live to hard cast this Terminus out of hand, we should be in a pretty good spot. Yep. Grab a steam vents here. This act, this activation is pretty scary here. Field of Rune deals with the Ink Moth Nexus, which is nice. We're taking like a six ball this turn, which feels real bad. I guess I can Cryptic Tap Draw. That's probably not unreasonable. Arcbond Ravager, sure. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. You're on a one card in hand here, though. And this is... This is where I talked like when we were doing the opening video about, you know, do something unfair. I'm in this position now where like basically the entire game is like, do can I can I find a terminus here at an opportune moment? This draw is not an opportune moment, believe it or not. I think we're gonna see them kinda surprised to not see them animate the ink moth there, if I'm being honest. I'm just gonna see him make a one-one instead, sure. Like, I have, I have a few draws here now. So, like, this lets me draw a card, and then this, and then I get a draw step, and then I get another draw off of this, then I get another draw step after that. So, I got, I got a lot of looks at another Terminus, and we're potentially setting up to just, like, honest, honest Terminus on six here. Yeah, so I guess I, guess I just put this into play tapped, past the turn. And then I'm gonna fog one more time here, and then uh So now drawing because I drew this Jace the Mind Sculptor, drawing opt is also a good draw. Because if I draw an opt, I'll be able to Jace Storm, put the Terminus back, opt into Terminus on their turn. So I wouldn't mind drawing an opt here. I really don't want to draw another terminus with this draw because I don't have the white left up to miracle at this turn. This is one of the many reasons why Cryptic Command is an absurd and very powerful Magic the Gathering card here. Or basically, we're basically playing a Fog deck at the moment. And all of our Fogs can trip, which is just like, it's extremely more annoying for them. And like, they've got one card in their hand, right? Like, they're, they had double Hardened Scales this game, and they've only got, they've only got one card here. This Terminus just, like, ends all their fun. And, like, I've got Colonnade, Field of Rune, and a handful of cards here. Goodbye, friends. Nice Welding Jar. I, I, I appreciate an opponent who understands when the game is over. Rejection's pretty good here. Static Hester's good here. Logic Knot is not amazing. Hon honestly, we don't have many of that card. We don't have that many cards that we want to cut, just because like this matchup's pretty reasonable. I, I wonder if I just like trim a lightning helix, just because like it's kind of clunky. I think I want the cryptic commands. It's just like fogs. Like the double cryptic command was very good that game. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna trade logic knots and a helix for two uh rejections on a static caster.
who are thinking a little bit more about what they're doing than we are. It is worth noting that this build that we are playing cannot take enchantments off the table. So often the opponent's deck will have um, Evolutionary Leap as one of their cards that hammers control decks. So if they have access to a fast copy of Evolutionary Leap, we could be in trouble here. We feel, we feel, sorry, just before someone drops a comment down below, which if you're watching this on YouTube, which you have to be if you're watching it, uh, like the video, ring that bell, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. But don't make that comment. Jeff, technically, you can bounce, you can bounce it with a cryptic command. Sure, yes, cryptic command can bounce it off the table. I get it. You're technically correct. Thank you. Thank you for playing. <laughs> Oh, Magic players, y'all are great sometimes. Other times, not so much. But a lot of the time, you're pretty great. I like you. You're okay. You can stick. You can stick around. Sans, Sans Eve attack with Ink Moth for one. Her resolves. That things, things that bode well for our hero. It's funny, I don't I don't remember which Magic Online update I started doing this, but once you turn a creature land into a creature, when it goes back into not being a creature again, it leaves like this faded power and toughness box here. I noticed it happened to my Celestial Colonnades last match too. Because it's not it's not there until you've made it a creature for the first time. It just like hangs out as like this phantom power and toughness box. Man, that's rude. I really liked my search for As How how am I supposed to find As Kanta now, opponent? As Kanta, As Kanta and I, As Kanta and I go way back, and now we just can't find each other. It's fine. I'll look up As Kanta on Facebook later. I'm sure they have a profile. Maybe they're maybe As Kanta is privacy aware. They don't. They don't use Facebook. All right, what do we got? I think that's fine. I think we're we're playing we're playing determinus at the moment, aren't we? Aren't we? Aren't we always playing determinus? When when aren't we playing determinus? Sequencing here is curious. I'm kind of surprised they didn't attack first. Playing around like Snapcaster Flash again. Uh, no, no. All right. A little awkward. I guess I guess I do this and pass. I think if they fire up Inky here, I probably path to exile it. If I keep their creature lands off the table, the Termini that come off the top of our deck become much more powerful. So like hopefully this is like fire up Ink Moth, attack, activate. And I'm like, Path Ink Moth, they sack it to Ravager, they hit me for 5, down to 17. I'm like, still in a fine spot here. Go ahead and wait till they attack. Wait till they pass priority after blockers have been declared. Why are they not attacking with the Arcbound Ravager? I, I, re I really just don't understand. That that worked out better than expected. Are they afraid of like condemn? Like put target attacking creature somewhere it shouldn't go. So this thing's gonna get a little bit bigger here. I guess they I guess they could get the land. Like do they want counters? They want counters. Okay. They're they're working on very few resources here. So I get two looks at terminus on my turn. 
I get two looks at Terminus on their turn, and I'm still not just dead on board. Snapcaster Mage, like, also a card worth keeping. All right, I'm going to opt now. Try and find a land. That is not worth keeping now, though. Moments, moments like that make you appreciate Arena, where you can, like, actually go back and, like, look at what's on the bottom of your deck. Like, did it did it really go? Are we... Am I, am I certain... Am I certain that the card I bottomed actually went to the bottom? So if they play a Hangerback Walker, it could have two things on it, and then this would put it to four things, and then they could sack those to potentially make this lethal, because this would be nine plus one plus four is ten. Eleven. So they can only make they can only attack this for twenty. They can actually do exactly twenty-two with hanger backwalker here, but obviously I could ceremonious reduction or snapcaster block. Sure. As you as you will. Show me your bratwurst. Alright. So we've put put one card on the bottom of our deck. So we've got 44 cards with one, four, four Termini in there. Just waiting, waiting for one to peel off the top here and make our opponent regret all their, their deck registration decisions. Yep. Yep. They might not have another land here. I'm going to go ahead and opt before damage here. It's because I prefer not to take a 9-ball if I can avoid it. I believe in miracles. Pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, 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 Easy game, easy life. Just guy Busto, obviously. Slowly, slowly bringing the house down. This is good. This is... If you... Earlier today, we streamed, played a bunch of Modern on stream. And we didn't, we didn't, I think, I think I've won more games in this league so far this evening that I did in the entire modern stream this morning. And I think we played five leagues. So it's like, it was, it was, a, it was a rough, rough morning. I've locked, I've locked up one entire treasure chesty after three matches here. And treasure chesties are worth an entire 1.76 tickets at the moment, which for those of you not familiar with the wonderful magic online economy means they are worth 33% or so less than they often are at 2.5. All of all of the same ticket incendiary value with 33% less of the recuperation value. Feels a real bad man. I really wish Magic Online gave me the option to just like only play for play points and like just gave me a guaranteed amount of play points rather than like having to interact with treasure chests in the secondary economy. All right, won the die roll. That's a good start. I like winning die rolls. Less less of a good follow-up. Take two. All right, third third times the charm, right? Third third times the charm. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking that we are rather charming, and this third this third time here is about to do it. Do you believe in me? I believe in me. Put a cap seven. Rude. All right. I mean, this is uh. This is what we've got. This is what we're working with. We can. We are going to. We are going to play a Magic: The Gathering card this game, which is all you can ask for on five. All right, Storm. Um, I wonder how this match. I have to imagine that the Storm matchup is one of the matches that's better for Just Guy than it is for Blue White. The fact that we have removal spells that don't give them lands is amazing. Like having having to path a Barala or a Goblin Electromancer, you're like, well, I have to do this, but at the same time, I kind of hate myself for doing it. Whereas bolting and helixing Barals and Chief Barals and 
uh, Electromancers is like, yeah, this is fine. Just like trade one for one. Clean. Sometimes you even trade up on mana with Lightning Bolt. Just like all of this is something I'm into. Looking for a blue source. Blue source and bolt. Blue source, bolt path are probably the cards I'm keeping here. I'm not keeping cryptic command. All right. So, so you're saying, so you're saying there's a chance. And that that's really all I need, chat. All, all, I, all you can ask for in life is a fair shake. We might have started, we might have started on five cards, but they, they could potentially be the five cards we deserved. If they don't play a dork here to logic not for two, I'm going to flash in this ambush viper and just like take them to pound town. It's like, welcome, welcome to the Thunderdome. Do this for X is one since they don't have another land. I, I wouldn't mind drawing another blue source here so I could snap logic for one. Fetch land would be great actually. Field of Rune. I'm actually going to bin that. Perfect. Look at that. So now, now I can snap Logic Knot for two. Which is great. It means if they go land creature, I get to keep them off of it. All right, they're spinning their tires here. They must be looking for a land. All right, they're at 16 from their, their pain land here. Looks like they're still missing a land drop. So looking for cryptic commands, removal spells, logic knots. I'm gonna bin that. Looking for some actual action here. So if they try and combo next turn, we are dead. However, I do get to snap opt here. You can maybe argue that I keep I should keep the op so I can op snap opt on the next turn, but meh. If they do have a land plus a mana creature here. I can snap opt into Bolt or Path to Exile to potentially save myself from dying, which would be nice. So this, I think, means we're going to see Ritual Gifts here in a second. Which Logic Knot is going to be good against. Put Lightning Helix in your bin. Nope. So when the, so the Storm deck can go off without a mana creature in play. However, when they're low on land, that's not an option for them, generally speaking. So being able to keep them off of that seems good. Yeah, I think I think this is a mistake on my opponent's part. I think when I when I when I tapped out at their end of turn, like I needed to snap off because I just didn't have anything going on. But I think when I tapped out to snap, basically tapped out to snap opt at the end of their turn, they should have they should have ritual gifts there. They, they let themselves fall into the trap of this card's an instant, I play instants during my opponent's end step instead of just like making me have it. Yep. All right, so this is not deterministic because I get to kill the Braille. So if they don't kill my Snapcaster Mages and they don't kill me, uh, burn spells are lethal, untapped lands are lethal. They might get a non-standard 
For people that like mental shortcuts, I always like to mention when I play against Storm, Gifts Ungiven with three red floating and a creature in play is deterministic because they get Ritual, Ritual, Manamorphose, Past and Flames. However, this is not deterministic necessarily. This is this is a good this is a good pile for my opponent. So is this a good pile? Do I care? No, I actually don't think I care. So I thought they had one more mana floating. They don't. So if I ditch these two and their last card's Ritual, they go Ritual, Ritual up to five mana, and then Past in Flames with five mana only leaves them with one floating, so they can't do anything with it. So I'm going to ditch their two win conditions here. And this could just be if they have two Rituals, if they, their last card is a Ritual, they're hoping I just don't kill them next turn, and they get to untap and combo me next turn. So hopefully we hit one of my plethora of outs here. Snapcasters are lethal, Burn Spells are lethal, Untap Plans are lethal. Counterspell also effectively lethal because it stops their past in flames. No, I'm going to take Cryptic Command. That's fine. Cryptic Command. Cryptic Command is like as good as lethal, I think, here. It's going to be my no button. God, every when when I win with this deck, I understand why people register it. Like when I'm not winning with this deck, it's just like when you're not winning games, it just like feels so bad. But like when you win games, you just like feel unbeatable. Like we've only get to five that game. We've only get to five, kept the one lander, scried the second land to the top, and just like searched for his can to just like picked the game up and just like ran it across the finish line for us. All right, I would like all of these. Um, I would not like Terminus. I would not like Electrolyze. I would not like Path to Exile. I think I actually want the Search... The Is it Staticaster? I think I don't want the Jace of the Mind Sculptors. So, like, Tefri has a 5 in his corner, but he's really a 3-mana Planeswalker, right? So, I think, I think this is good. Shit. Ch Sure, there's a lot of people at home that are excited about this. All right, let's do it. Yeah, just uh, that one. That one really needed uh, needed a red source. Maybe maybe three surgicals is too many. Maybe, maybe three surgicals is too many. Sorry, for this match, I don't, I don't think three surgicals is too many in general in the board, but might be, might be wrong to bring all those in here, especially because a lot of these decks board off of some of their gifts ungiven post board, like expecting disruption and graveyard hate, and they board into pieces of the puzzle. But I guess at the same time, if they're using pieces, they could like dump grape shots and stuff into their bin that could potentially we could get get out with that. Just gonna be like the six to eight goblin turn. Or just like the ritual into Boral full combo you onto. Alright, there's one static caster in my deck. Maybe I'm just supposed to leave three Terminus in instead of the Surgicals. I can buy that for a dollar. I could buy it. That's the plan I'm supposed to be on. And again, like this, this game kind of goes to show like exactly what I was talking about, right? Like the game we won was long and sweet and I got to feel awesome for it. And this game that I'm losing, even though my opponent, even though my opponent and I are about to be one and one here. Maybe, maybe we're about to be one and one. All right. Hold, please, please hold. Need to need to check and see if they have a remand. One moment, please.
I guess I guess I shouldn't have cracked that fetch land. If I if I didn't have cracked that fetch land, we'd be remand here. Okie doke. Bye friends. Am I dead? Nope, not yet. Got it. Get it, got it. Good. Better, better to be lucky than good, chat. Better, better. Remember, if you have to, if you have to choose one of those two, ideally you should be both. But if you have, if you are forced to choose only one, choose lucky. Man, can we can we talk about my mana base for a moment? Yikes! Look at look at these look at these lands. I think the mana base is fine for the record, but we are just just six lands in. Can't cast cryptic command. Great, two more glorious bricks. One more, one more glorious brick. Okay, so this is a, this is a casting stuff from their bin looking for a Looking for a way to cantrip, cantrip into a way to kill this and to play, play goblin, or we just cantrip into lethal or, or get lethal off the table. So they've got two more rituals and a sleight of hand. I'm at 10, so like it doesn't take much to kill me with a grape shot here if they have one. So that's six, this is seven, this is eight. All right, one more spell kills me with a grip shot. Just like cantrip grape shot kills me. Okay, grape shot's lethal. I did not deserve to win that game of magic, but thankfully, as we mentioned earlier, magic is a very high variance game, which often means just like when you lose games where you did not make any mistakes, sometimes you just like bowl through a china shop, smash your way into a game, and your opponent draws a bunch of lands and they die, you know? Sometimes they are 18 land combo deck, Gonna draw nine of them. Gonna draw, gonna draw eight of them, gonna draw ten of them. They're just not, not gonna be able to do a whole lot. It's gonna be, it's gonna be wonderful. Here we go, here we go again. Do 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 do. Alright, one more. Hopefully it's been a it's been a hot second to beat a 5-0, I feel like. So now we've locked up four treasure chesties, 1.76 times one, two, three, four treasure chesties. Oh, oh, oh. All right, all right, onward, upward, backward, forward. See if we can win ourselves, double it up. Last match is worth double duty. In. This is like, we just like beat Storm on Dub's mold of five. So like we keep, we're keeping a reasonable seven, which probably means we're dead. Feels like how the night's going. It's like mulligan to oblivion, get lucky and win. Keep reasonable seven, brick and die. 
Uh oh. Uh oh. Ad nauseum? What's my ad nauseum matchup look like? Oh, I got counterflex on my sideboard. And rejection. Definitely ad nauseum. Double Lotus Bloom is scary. This is gonna be a Bolchu turn into Snap Bolchu into Hold Cryptic Command up. Cross my fingers, hope it's good enough. Getting a Steam Vents here because we want to hold Cryptic Command up, obviously. Having played this matchup from the Ad Nauseum side, this matchup tends to favor Ad Nauseum. De this deck and decks like it are one of the big reasons you play a deck like Ad Nauseum. Ad Nauseum uh, tends to struggle against a lot of the more linear decks in the format, but like because they play a bunch of Pact of Negations, they tend to be very reasonable against this Arctic that I'm playing. That being said, Jeskai tends to do a bit better against Ad Nauseum than traditional Blue White does because we have access to burn spells. Kind of close the door a little bit faster. The reason why Ad Nauseum is so terrifying is because starting next turn when they have all these Lotus Blooms in play for piles of mana, I literally can't tap out anymore. They can combo at completely at instant speed, which means we just have to hope the Snapcaster Mage is going the distance. He's going for speed. He's all we have. In our time of need, he's racing and pacing and plotting the course. He's attacking for 14 over the course of seven turns. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Onward, upward, backward, forward. All right, dead to Angel's Grace, Ad Nauseam Pact of Negation. Bring it. Don't, don't actually bring it. Please have nothing for six turns and die. The tough part is that, like, if they play Unlife, I'm gonna cryptic it. Because, like, Unlife gives them five extra turns with just my Staffcaster clock. So, like, I can't let that resolve. But then, like, that leaves me open to Angel's Grace Ad Nauseum kill. But I think it's I think it's right to stop or to try and counter uh, Unlife from this position. All right, snappy boy. Turn the second. I believe in you, Snaps. We've not lost a game yet tonight, Snappy. You gonna you gonna let us down? Or are you gonna be the quarterback that runs this ball across the finish line? I think some of that metaphor was correct. Those of you that sports with the balls, feel free to let me know in the comments below if I have metaphored correctly. Ad nauseum resolves. Ah. Uh, what? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, you know, some, some, some days, chat. Some, some days, the world, the world's your oyster, and no matter what happens, things are coming up sunshine. And that's just, that's just what, just how you do. On those days, you don't, you just don't question it. You just, you just take, you take all the beautiful, wonderful things you get that come your way. And you just look up to the sky and you go, thank you. I needed this. I need, I needed this pick me up. And you're just like, all right, submit. This is, this, this is all we needed. You know, sometimes, sometimes the Adnosium player catch Adnosium in the die. I don't <laughs> tis not tis not mine to wonder why we just we just cash the treasure chest chat take the take the treasure chest into the bank oh yeah this hand uh, does not accomplish much so I'm going to mulligan want some disruption 
This hand needs another land, but it's otherwise very reasonable. This is a Snapcaster Mage on two type hand. In fact, I'm going to fetch Shock Steam Vents on one and cast Opt. I guess I might save the Snapcaster Mage to snap Opt on three, depending on what our land situation looks like. If it looks like I'm gonna have the mana to snap Opt on three, I'm probably gonna Helix on two and then snap Opt on three, because can tripping my Snapcaster Mage would be ideal. So looking, looking for a blue source here, ideally. I didn't talk a ton while I was sideboarding. You'll note that I just like cut the Terminuses and the Path to Exiles and like brought in everything that could have a text. Like Ceremonious Rejection like obviously isn't something to write home about in this matchup, but it's definitely a card that like I'm putting in my deck over a Terminus. This is not the untapped blue source I wanted for Christmas, but it'll like do as a consolation prize. We could die here. They could go land, spirit guide, um thing thing that's an unlife sure so this, this unlife is scary this unlife means when i tap out for the snapcaster mage next turn i could be in trouble i'm actually gonna play this colonnade tapped but i i have to put a clock into play i can't i can't just sit here with nothing so like if they have ad nauseum this turn i'm just gonna accept that i'm dead All right, how lucky do we continue to be? Okay. Save a spirit guide. This is naming Ad Nauseam. Okay. They exiled their lightning storm. They exiled their lightning storm. Exiling their lightning storm means that they cannot they cannot kill me because we continue to run hot and uh now i have a counterflux this is pretty sweet pretty pretty not bad so do i hold up counterflux here or do i just like cryptic bounce this on life and hope they die I guess, like, Cryptic Bounce the Unlife, hope they die, right? Pretty sure that's the line. So they have an Angel's Grace here. Oh, they, their Lotus Bloom's not coming in yet. So do they, they, they must have Angel's Grace or they could just pay for this. They're going to pitch Simeon Spirit Guide, add Nauseam into Angel's Grace. Okay, I'm, I'm actually going to let them do their thing here because I'm not actually certain they have enough they, they have enough mana sources this turn to kill me. Because they have two spirit guides left in their deck. They have two mana here and they have a land drop and they have to Angel's Grace to not die to this Pact of Negation. And because their Lightning Storm's gone, they have to kill me with Laboratory Maniac. And Laboratory Maniac requires you draw a card. So, like, they need to cast Laboratory Maniac for three and then spend a mana to draw a card. Hmm. 
So they have more Pact of Negations here. They have one more Pact of Negation. So I need to draw a counter spell or an untapped blue source or red source so I can Helix the Laboratory Maniac plus counter the Pact of Negation. And then that way when they go in to draw a card next turn for the draw step and can't they lose? Because their plan here is they go to draw a card next turn and they win the game. Oh, they have a land drop. Okay, so they have they have a serum visions. All right, so we're we are dead. Maybe I'm just supposed to leave. Maybe I'm just supposed to leave counterflux up here. Yes, yeah, so they they win the game with Lightning here. Okay, sweet. You know, I don't actually know there. Maybe it's wrong to just go for it there. I don't know. They only have they have like three. I guess they have four packed negations a lot of time post board. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a big fan of making combo decks have it, especially when it's tough matchups and they can just, like, untap and kill you. I guess they can't kill me through the counter flux and, like, it forces them to have double ad nauseum. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'm just dumb. I'm probably just dumb. I should have left the counter flux up. This is, uh, this is how... This is how it ends, chat. Not with a bang, but with a whimper. Um, I could have put that anywhere because we're grabbing Sacred Foundry. this into play this doesn't prevent them from comboing us but it makes it cost significantly more mana especially with um with angel's grace so like if they have unlife it doesn't it doesn't annoy them that much but if they have to angel's grace angel's grace costs one then ad nauseum costs more than more and more etc counterflux is a good draw Especially with Damping Sphere in play. Oh, I should have looked to see if they brought in ways to interact with Damping Sphere, actually. That's something I should have done. It's not an unlife. It's good for us. So, to combo with... Uh, this in play with Angel's Grace, it costs them one, then six, then five. So it costs them a total of uh, 12, which is much more than the, than the nine it normally costs. And because I have this in play, they can't kill me at instant speed here, which is nice. There's no guarantee that I draw another land next turn, so I'm just going to go ahead and play this out and start drawing some cards here. Hope that this is enough to keep them from killing me for a turn. If they have a Pact of Negation here, they might Pact of Negation this, then just, like, pay for it next turn. Does not seem unreasonable. This card will bury them pretty quickly. They value Ad Nauseuming here. There we go. Well, the good news is if they want to Pact of Negation me, they have to burn the last counter off of this. So that's good for me. Oh, they actually can't Pact of Negation me unless they find a Simeon Spirit Guide, right? Because they have to pay one from this and they have to pay five next turn. I guess they could have, they could hit the, uh, the what's it called? All right, so now they have to think about every hit they take because they they're down to five. So if they flip their third Ad Nauseum, they lose the game. I mean, if you hit here, you have to hit again, right? That's such a weird place to stop. They could already have the Angel's Grace or the Simeon Spirit Guide in their hand. So if they want to pack the negation this, they need Angel's Grace or Simeon Spirit Guide or they lose next turn. Whenever 
I'm actually supposed to just tuck that. It's possible I'm supposed to just tuck that. Just like cut them off a of mana next turn. Yeah, I think I think that's actually a mistake on the Tefri draw there, maybe. Just like put them on as few resources as possible. It is worth noting that they are dead to a Celestial Colony to attack next turn. So they need to play this on life out. They exiled that, they exiled that. They cast that, which makes a lot of sense. Oh, actually, they're still dead, right? Because like if I hit if I hit the untapped land naturally for the turn, the Tefri just tucks this in and then I hit them to hit them to one or hit them to zero. Seems like it bodes well for us. What land did they play? They played... Uh, they played Plains, which they did not reveal, so they still have all these other lands in their hand. So I really like to draw an untapped land here. I have 16 cards in their hand, so let's keep track of what they discard so I can clean them off the revealed zone here. Probably going to see a lot of these cantrips go, because they're much worse while I have the Damping Sphere in play. See if we get the untapped land. Temple of Tilt. I think I still just go ahead and tuck this in. Because like I said, while I have the Damping Sphere out, it is very difficult for them to combo. It costs them an incredible amount of mana. So just like keeping that card off the table seems potentially very good for me. Their Silence is also much worse while Damping Sphere is in play as well. They discarded an Ad Nauseam, so they must have another, right? How you doing? How's this, uh, how's this colonnade looking? Okay. I mean the 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 one game I lost in that set. I uh, I tried real hard to lose and uh, I lost it. Uh, I don't really know that I have anything too specific to say about this list. I like I like I like a lot of what this list is doing, and I kind of talked about that before we started. I like being blue white control and leaning into terminus. I think terminus is the best thing you can be doing. So play four of that. I like. The small amounts of red cards to let you play more Snapcaster Mage and let you be a little bit proactive. As far as the details in the sideboard go, I could take or leave a lot of them. They just hedge different directions in different ways. I, I feel like this is probably too many surgical extractions, but I would have to play a bunch of matches against Dredge to know, like, are these three copies of surgical extraction worth their slots? Um, Counterflux is really good. I think this card is sweet. 
I think there's enough people that like to play Celestial Colonnade decks, like having access to this card is great there. It's also very good against random decks like Ad Nauseum and Storm. This deck can come in against, you know, random big mana decks like Tron and Tim Amulet Titan as well. So, um, but yeah, I would, my one question would be is figure out if I need these slots against um, graveyard decks. And if not, maybe consider something like Alpine Moon or other things like that for like the big mana matchups. Cause I, I really hate losing to Tron and I feel like this deck can post board especially with a couple spheres and a couple of rejections with like moons too can have an arguably decent can have an arguably decent tron matchup while post board against dredge it's probably still pretty helpless thanks any thanks at any rate for watching today folks hopefully you enjoyed this video remember if you did enjoy it to subscribe to my channel like the video ring the bell leave a comment below do all those wonderful things that the youtube algorithm enjoys Hope everybody has happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever whatever festivities you are celebrating this time of the year. I hope you enjoy them. Remember, I'm not going to be live Saturday, Sunday, or Monday on the 22nd, the 23rd, or the 24th, but there will be YouTube exclusives being published here on my channel. And remember, if you enjoy my stuff, please consider subscribing on Twitch, especially if you have Twitch Prime that doesn't cost you anything and it helps keep me employed here. So thanks for watching, folks, and I'll catch all of y'all real soon, hopefully.